Hey everybody, Magpie Gaming here, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about loot boxes or loot crates, whichever you want to call them. And it's going to be quite an off-the-cuff video, I haven't done much preparation into this video. That doesn't mean to say that I haven't researched what I'm about to say, but usually I like to try and put a structure to a video, but this time I'm just going to say it as it comes out. Um, the video in the background is of little relevance to what I've got to say, so if you want to minimise the screen while I talk, that is fine. But yeah, I wanted to talk about loot boxes. There seems to be a lot of um, a lot of videos going around about them at the moment. A lot of big YouTubers doing videos about them. Jim Sterling's on them pretty much weekly at the moment. Total Biscuits done a very long video regarding them, and there seem to be something that's been pushed to the forefront of gaming just recently due to some big titles that are coming out and some big titles that have used them in the last year or so. And I wanted to give my opinion on them. And forgive me if I don't go direct to my opinion. I might go round the trees to get to the houses, that kind of thing. But generally my opinion on them is that I don't particularly like them. I understand why they're there. And I understand why they're in games. But for me they're not something that I bother with too much at all. Because at the moment... And I say at the moment, I'll get to that in a minute, but at the moment, you don't actually need them to play a game. You can play a game quite well and never purchase a loot box. So, you might get given some in-game, and you could use those, but you can play most games quite easily and attain the vast majority of the items that you would get in loot crates by simply just grinding at the game. But, as I say, this looks like it's something that's going to change in the very near future and it's not good for gaming at all to be fair and i think it's because we have this massive shift at the moment a lot of developers are looking for ways to step away from season passes and timed dlc and priced dlc they'd rather give you the base game here you go here's the game here's all the content but if you want to access this part of the game, you're going to need to grind very, very hard to get there. Or you can buy it in a loot crate. And that seems to be the general premise of how the gaming industry is going right now. And the prime example at the moment is Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, I know that since we had the beta, EA have come out and says, Whoa, 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 hang on. Those loot crates, that system isn't yet finalised. Which, it seems odd that they come out and say that after they took a few days of bashing for the loot crates that were within the beta. But they've now come out and says, well, that wasn't a finished system. That was just in there for you to have a look at like what it might be like. Which is odd, because before this they didn't make any mention that the loot crate system was an unfinished system. They didn't make any kind of um, information to let us know that it was unfinished and to just take it with a pinch of salt. But since they took a massive bashing from it for a few days, they then came out and says, well, it's not finished, we're still working on it. Damn right you're still working on it, because people aren't happy with it. So, within that game, and it's not solely just to that game, it seems that there are a couple of games now coming out where this is possible, but you can basically pay to win. And another one of this was the, um, is it Shadow of Mordor, the new um, Lord of the Rings game. That is very much the same. If you want to get ahead in the multiplayer, you can simply pay to get ahead. You can pay to get access to items. And that, for me, is just completely unfair. It's not how games are meant to be. But it seems to be that developers these days aren't happy with just giving us a base game and taking the £40 or $60, whatever, for that game, and that's that. They want you to buy the base game, but then they want you to buy everything that they add on to it that's extra to try and eke as much money out of that title as possible. And I think every now and again you'll get a game that comes along and it is just a base game. There's no extra content, there's no added bonuses or anything like that there's no pre-order bonuses for it there's no extra mission if you paid for this version you know it's just a stripe up game like it used to be and those things are lovely i love games like that but there's very few of them about now 
very very few of them at all and even indie developers who used to be you know you go to people when you wanted that type of game no longer provide that type of game not saying that every indie, indie developer is the same but quite a lot are going down that route perfect example of that recently was battlegrounds and I love Battlegrounds, I love playing it. If if you follow my channel, you know that I like playing it, I love the game. But they came out at the start and said, oh, it wouldn't be supported with loot crates. You know, you will be able to get in-game currency to get loot crates, and that is that. But then when they had the Gamescom Invitational, you could pay to have access to a loot crate that was brought out specifically for Gamescom. And the upshot of that was that a lot of people says, well, you said you wouldn't do this. And you said you especially wouldn't do it while the game was in early access. So you're now charging people access to things within the game, even though it's not a finished game. Now, I think the fact that it's not a finished game isn't really an argument to be had. Because, as I say, there's a big change in the industry now. And one of those is to release a game once it's playable and say, oh, well, there you go, early access. You can play it now. And then a lot of developers... Not all developers, but a lot of developers will then just sit back, watch the money come in, go buy a nice house, buy a Ferrari, and laugh all the way to the bank, and never finish the game. You know, that's how some developers do things. So, and I'm not going to say it's well known, but I mean, look at Star Citizen. I'm not saying that that game will never be finished, and it's, you know, it's not, it's a con or anything like that. But it's had over 100 million in uh, crowdfunding and it's still not finished. And the version 3.0 just seems to stall and stall and stall and never come to fruition. So, you know, a lot of developers go down that route. As I say, I'm not saying that all of them do and I'm not saying that Star Citizen will go that way. I'm sure that they will get it finished at some point. But people are having to wait a bit too long for that. I think it annoys a lot of people. But anyway, that's a different subject. But yeah, Battlegrounds, perfect example, was never going to sell loot crates, then sold a loot crate. The upshot of that was that because those items were finite, they were then getting traded on the Steam trading store thing, whatever you call it, or the marketplace, sorry, there you go, brain entered action there. And they were, they were going for a hell of a lot of money. I mean, I did a video not long ago and the miniskate was selling for 114 quid. Now, I don't know how many people were actually buying that, or if anybody was buying that, but for those prices, that was ridiculous. But anyway, they are a prime example of a company that have started to go down the loot crate system. And loot crates in themselves aren't a real issue. Look at Battlefield 1. It's got the battle packs, which are loot crates. They just call them battle packs. And you, every time you earn XP, you get a little bit closer to getting your next battle pack. And that's fine. It's purely cosmetic items. There's nothing in it that's going to make you better in on the map. You know, you're not going to be able to be more invincible or to shoot faster. It doesn't change any of the core mechanics of the game whatsoever. They're purely just cosmetic for the weapons that you're using. And you get the squad XP bonus things, which again, okay, you could level up a little bit quicker. But leveling up is purely a personal thing. It's not done against other people you know it's not a leaderboard against other people so yeah they're not something that's going to go away anytime soon i don't think and i think that it's going to be more and more developers will say well you can have this game and you can have these levels but check out our loot crates maybe you'd like an item out of there and i think more and more games are going to be supported through the microtransactions with loot crates I mean, microtransactions came into games a long time ago, and they sort of were just put there, and they're like, those are there if you want them, but you don't need them. But if you want them, then fine, you can pay for them and you can have them. And there wasn't really much done at the time, so I think now developers have seen that they can put them in with minimal backlash, and yeah, they can get away with it, they can get away with putting it in, and nobody really seems to say much. So... There's a new game coming out soon. A good friend of mine, Psycho Ghost, linked me to this yesterday on Twitter, and that is Hunt, the showdown, which is from the developers of Crisis, and it's a new Battle Royale-style game that's coming out. Now, I'm going to do a separate video on that once I've done some digging on this game fully, but 
the developers of that and this is if Wikipedia is to be believed because I'm getting this information from Wikipedia. But according to that, they are going to 100% support this game through microtransactions and loot crates. They say it's going to be a AAA game that will be free. You'll be able to download it and play it. There'll be no obligation to take part in the microtransactions and loot crates, but they are there if you want to. And they're saying that the cosmetic items, which they think will completely and utterly fund this game and its continued development and server things, you know, it'll pay for the servers and that. So that, in a way, isn't too much of a bad thing. But you've got to look at things like this. There's recently been a petition done here in the UK. And this petition was for the UK government to look into loot crates or loot boxes and see whether you can actually liken them to gambling. Now, over here in the UK, you can do a petition through the government's website, and if this petition gains enough signatures, by law, the government have to debate this subject. And these subjects can be really random, or they can be really important issues. And I think this is one that's quite important. Over here in England, we do have quite strict gambling laws, but you can still get into a lot of trouble with gambling. You know, it's not too hard to get in a lot of trouble if you want to. But the vast majority of gambling sites that you can go to here in the UK have daily limits set to what you can spend. So, for instance, I use the UK lottery website and you can set a minimum spend yourself. But the site will actually have a minimum spend set for you anyway. Now, this is the same for everybody across the board. It doesn't take into account how much you win or how much you've spent previously. They just set a daily limit. And this is something that doesn't currently exist with loot crate systems. Not to my knowledge, anyway. So if you were chasing an item within a game and you really, really want that out that loot crate, you buy a loot crate, you don't get it. So you buy another one, you don't get it. You buy another one. And it just the cycle just repeats until you get what you want. Now, a lot of people say, well, that isn't gambling. Because every time you get one of those loot crates, even if you don't get something, if you get what you want, you still get something out of it. But you're then persuaded to go again because you didn't get the item that you wanted. And that is gambling. That is the pure essence of gambling. It's chasing that that you want. If you put a bet on a football match and it doesn't win, then you think, well, I was very, very close with the result. I'm going to bet on that one because I want to win. And it's that mentality, and that mentality is indignant in every human being. We don't do something for nothing. We want to get something, so we do the loot crate, and we don't get what we want. So we go back again, and we do it again. And that is probably where it's akin to gambling, because you just keep going back until you get what you want out of it. But then even if you get the item that you want, you think, well, I want that item now, and you start again. So I think there's definitely going to be scope for there being limits on the amount that you can spend on games, especially sinking into loot crates. As I say, I'm not aware of any limits on games that currently allow you to buy loot crates. So it's definitely something that needs to be looked at. There needs to be protection there for people. You know, they don't need to be spending over the hill for things, daft in-game items that they don't really need in real life. They're just chasing within the game. But I definitely think there needs to be regulation for this now. And I can see this happening in the UK. As I say, we have very strict laws here. And I can see it being something that is changed here to protect the consumer from spending too much to gain items. And as I say, these are something that isn't going to go away. They're going to be around for quite a while. They're more... Like I said, they're trying to push them into being something that actively supports a game now because the 30 quid or the $60 that you spent to get the game just isn't enough for the developer no more. They want to put a game out and they want to keep they want to keep it generating money for them for as long as possible. And in some respects that's not a bad thing, but you know, I just like to have the days where you bought a base game and that was what you got. And there was none of this added bullshit on top. But it's definitely the way the industry is going. Is it good for the industry? I don't know. When season passes and pre-ordering and pre-order bonuses came out, it was generally seen as a bad thing for the industry. And I think now the industry is waking up to the fact that a lot of people just won't pre-order. The bonuses aren't worth it. So they're looking at other ways of getting the money out of us. 
because obviously developers can never get enough money, you know, never get enough money back. But they need to look at other ways of doing it because I don't think really the loot crate system is going to be very much liked. It isn't liked right now by a lot of prominent people and it isn't liked by a lot of, you know, just average gamers. So, like I say, it's not something that I take part in very often, if at all. I can't remember the last time I did. So, yeah, definitely something that needs to be looked at and worked on by these people. And that is my take on loot crates and loot boxes. I'm sorry if I've rambled a bit too long or some of what I said didn't make sense. Sometimes when I'm at work, because uh, I work nights, so when I'm at work I'll run through what I want to say in a video and then when it comes to doing the video, none of it comes out how I expected it to or how I wanted it to, but I don't think I've done too bad with this one. But yeah, my general point is that whilst I'm not a huge supporter of loot crates, I do accept that they're not going to go away anytime soon. There's going to be more of it added into games. As one developer gets away with it, another developer will get away with it. They'll see that it's working for one developer and decide to put it in their game. And for indie developers, if it supports them, then yeah, that's all good. But I don't understand why these massive developers are doing it. And they're putting people off their games. You know, it's Battlegrounds made a mistake doing what it did, but it hasn't hurt the game. The game just keeps flying off the shelves, basically, getting bigger and bigger every day. But I reckon when we get the full version of that game, it is going to be supported by loot crates. You are going to be able to buy in-game cosmetic items. You'll never be able to buy items that boost you in the game, because that would go against the ethic of the game altogether. But definitely cosmetic items will be supported in that. As for where Battlefront 2 goes, we'll have to wait and see what EA do with that. I think bringing out the loot crate system as it was in the beta will be a bad move for them. They need to look at changing something like that. Because you can essentially just buy power-ups for the multiplayer. You know, you can have somebody that's grand in a way, genuinely doing things the way they're meant to be done. And somebody can just come along and beast the lot of you. Because they've sunk a couple of hundred quid into the loot crates. And they're now, you know, basically walking around with a halo around them, untouchable, invincible. So, it's something that needs changing. I think that is definitely something that would put me off playing Battlefront 2. As much as I love the beta and as much as I am considering buying the full game, I'm put off by that. I don't think I'll have a great experience in the multiplayer if that is the way it's going to be set up. But we'll have to wait and see on that one. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I have been Magpie Gaming, and I shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for listening to me. If you watched as well, that is great. I'm not sure what you'll be watching, because I haven't got around to editing this video yet. So, it probably PUBG. Might even be a chicken dinner in there. Maybe. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.